Good afternoon. This is Pastor Bob Uzzle from the Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Corsicana, Texas. Today is Holy Saturday. Ever heard of that? Well, a lot of people have not. It's a time in between. Yesterday was Good Friday where we remembered the passion and death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Tomorrow is Easter Sunday when we celebrate the greatest event in human history, the resurrection of our Lord. I, uh, you know, what happens in the meantime? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. I want to read a passage of scripture from Matthew 27, beginning with verse 57 from the New, uh, from the New Jerusalem Bible. When it was evening, there came a rich man of Arimathea called Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. The man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean shroud, and put it on his own, his put it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a large stone across the entrance of the tomb and went away. Now Mary of Magdala and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the sepulcher. Next day, that is, when preparation day was over, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to in a body to Pilate and said to him, Your Excellency, we recall that this impostor said, While he was still alive, three days I shall rise again. Therefore, give the order to have the sepulchre kept secure until the third day, for fear of his disciples come and steal him away and tell the people, He is risen from the dead. The last piece of fraud would be worse than that went before. Pilate said to them, You may have your guard go and make uh, all as secure as you know. So they went and made the sepulchre secure, putting seals on the stone, and mounting a guard. Holy Saturday is, like I say, it, it it's not as well known as Good Friday. It's certainly not as well known as Easter. But it's never less meaningful. It gets often overlooked. Uh, it's a major celebration in both the Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholic traditions, and some of our Protestant traditions as well. In the Roman Catholic and some Anglican and Lutheran traditions, Holy Saturday lasts until nightfall, after which the Easter Vigil is celebrated, marking the official start of the Easter season. The rubrics state that the Easter Vigil must take place in the night. It must begin after nightfall and end before dawn. The service may start with a fire and the lighting of the new Paschal candle. In Roman Catholic and some Anglican observance, the Mass is the first Mass since that of Maundy Thursday, and during it the statues and icons covered with purple veils during Passion Tide are dramatically unveiled. Some Anglican churches prefer to celebrate Easter and the lighting of the new Paschal candle at the dawn on Easter Day. Baptisms may take place in this service, and baptismal vows are often renewed. When I lived in my hometown of Waco, I, uh, on a number of occasions, attended Holy Saturday um, at uh, St. Albans Episcopal Church. That was a church that you know, I was raised Baptist, but I've had uh, exposure to all of them, and I find some good in all of them, but I don't know if that's still the case, but uh, that church was always open 24-7. If you needed to pray, you could get in there any time. And I often went there when the church was closed and always enjoyed it. But you walk in, uh, uh, you see a sign of, above the door that says, Prayer is Work. As you're leaving the church, there's a sign above the door, work is prayer. That makes you think. It was back in the 1990s. 
during uh, Holy Saturday. It was an especially meaningful occasion because a friend of mine from high school uh, who I had known for many years and uh, still see him at some class reunions today. At the time, he had a newborn baby girl. And they attended St. Albans, and, and that little girl was baptized on Holy Saturday. And I'll always thank God for the fact that I was able to be there and share that very joyous occasion with my friend. Uh, I'll always remember that, and I hope everybody connected with it always will. I've been to some t other observances over the years. Um, again, Easter is a busy time, and and some of these things we don't observe like we should. This year, again, because of the pandemic, we're having to uh, do things differently. But let's not forget what this season is all about. Give you some other interesting customs. In the predominantly Roman Catholic Philippines, Holy Saturday is legally and colloquially known in English as Black Saturday, given the colors roll in mourning. Traditional taboos from the previous day are carried over, sometimes broken, swimming is allowed in the afternoon. Most common commercial establishments resume operations with smaller enterprises remaining closed until Easter. Television and radio stations broadcast cast on shorter hours with special programming and remain off the air. After the liturgical changes of the Second Vatican Council, which occurred between 1962 and 1965. Um, and by the way, uh, have time, Google the person of John the 23rd. Um, he was an outstanding pope. He was the one who, who brought it together and brought Catholicism into the modern world. And uh, his influence is still very much felt today. But uh, they made a lot of changes at Vatican II. And the term Sabado de Gloria, which is Spanish for Glory uh, Sabbath or Gloria Saturday, became widely used referring to the return of Channing and Gloria Excelsius Deo during Easter Vigil. In predominantly Roman Catholic Poland, uh, Swakonka meaning the blessing of the Easter baskets on Holy Saturday is one of the most enduring and beloved traditions. I know we got a lot of traditions this time of year and some we're going to miss out on this year. Uh, probably not going to be as many Easter egg hunts. Uh, the bunny is going to be shortchanged. But those things are all right. But that's not what Easter is all about. It's also called Resurrection Sunday because the focus is upon the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, so we should never forget what these, these seasons are all about. I've always had a problem with the commercialization of Holy Days. There's, uh, you know, it, too often Easter has become a spring style show. And Christmas has focused more about Santa Claus and Jesus. And with uh, God removed from the picture, with Thanksgiving, there's nobody to thank. I hate the term Turkey Day because it's not about turkey. It's about giving Thanksgiving to God. And uh, Ash Wednesday and Holy Saturday are traditional fast days during the Lenten season. And uh, those of us who fasted yesterday were able to break the fast this morning. And uh, some um, have different types of fasting. Some go all day and all night. Some just go to sunset. Some, because of health problems, can't do a complete fast, but will uh, make an adjustment in their intake of food. 
The whole purpose is to demonstrate the spirit rules the body and not vice versa. And uh, so uh, I can tell you from experience, though, it, it can be very valuable to your spiritual life. And uh, some places they extend the fasting into Holy Saturday. I, I've never done that. But this is the last day of Holy Week. It ends the season of Lent. It is not known as the Vigil of Easter. The day is traditionally a time of reflection and waiting. The vigil stems back to when Jesus' followers spent the day waiting after the crucifixion on Good Friday. It is also known as the day when Roman Governor Pontius Pilate instructed guards to be posted at the tomb to prevent Jesus' followers from removing the body and claim that he had risen from the dead. Holy Saturday was also known as Great or Grand Saturday. And uh, it um, has a lot of different names. It's known as Angelic Night. It was the only Saturday on which fasting was permitted in the early days of the Christian church. According to some sources, fasting occurred during the entire day or lasted for 40 days before Easter Sunday, sunrise during the first century A.D. You know, the Lenten season begins with... Uh, Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is the day after Shrove Tuesday, another interesting event. And uh, Shrove Tuesday is described as the last fling before the long fast. In Europe, uh, it was uh, the rules on fasting were strict, and so it was illegal, illegal to eat meat during Lent. And housewives would, would fry pancakes. They would uh, uh, use up all the bacon, fat, and lard in cooking pancakes since they weren't going to be using them during the Lenten season. Many of us are uh, who enjoy eating pancakes, and over the years I haven't met that many people who don't like pancakes. Uh, did you go to Pancake Day at IHOP? Well, I do. That raises money for my favorite charity, the Shriners Hospitals for Children. Uh, and I'll tell you about that at some other time. But uh, I'll hop uh, Pancake Day. Sometimes it falls on Shrove Tuesday and sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why. But, uh, of course, uh, they, all, they call Shrove Tuesday Fat Tuesday. Fat Tuesday in French is Mardi Gras. Of course, you know, uh, what goes on at Mardi Gras. <laughs> it's uh, the last fling before the long fast. Theoretically, the, the uh, festivities are supposed to end at midnight. I'm sure that it doesn't ever happen. It doesn't always happen that way. But me, the, the, as it, it's a, we need to have a proper balance. There's a time in life for feasting. There's a time in life for fasting. Uh, sometimes, you know, of course, weight control, dieting is very important. And uh, there's times, Christmas and Easter, we got a lot of good food with family and friends. Is it okay to splurge on times like this? I believe it is, but I believe you shouldn't do it every day. You know, you eat a sensible, uh, balanced diet throughout the year, and then there's, a, there's a special occasions when you can indulge a little bit extra, but don't do it all the time uh, because uh, uh, you lose your health, you lose everything. You know, take, take care of yourself. That, that, that's something very important. But back, uh, the holy seasons are all very meaningful. If you put a lot into them, you're going to get a lot out of them. And uh, that's true of Holy Saturday. And um, again, from in many churches, it's a special time for baptism. It's understandable why. Some people refer to the day as Easter Saturday, but that's a misnomer. Uh, holy Saturday is the last day of Lent. It's the eve of Easter. The Saturday after Easter is actually Easter Saturday or Bright Saturday. And uh, so sometimes these things are done incorrectly. The Paschal candle, which is made of white wax, symbolizes leading people out of the darkness of their into their celebration of the Easter Vigil. The candlelight is marked with the cross, an Alpha and Omega, the first and last letters, of the Greek alphabet. 
that symbolizes that Jesus Christ had, is and has always been, always will be with the humanity. It's, he is with humanity now, according to our belief as Christians. And uh, so this is quite significant. Today is Holy Saturday. The uh, Easter vigils are if done properly, can be very meaningful. Another thing can be very meaningful is Easter sunrise service. Again, a lot of things are being cut back on this year. It's my prayer to God that this will be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. we got to do what we need to do to protect ourselves and protect others during this pandemic. And only God knows how long it's going to last, but once it's over, Let's not take for granted all the things that we've been used to doing. Yes, I miss being in church. Today I went by a nursing home to deliver some Holy Communion that I previously consecrated to one of my members who's in the home. The nurse agreed to be sure she got it. And I talked to her on the phone. She did get it. I regret the fact that I can't actually go into the home and deliver it to her personally. But I understand because of the current circumstances, that is not wise. I'm glad I was able to make communion available to members of Bethel throughout the community. And we observed communion together on Thursday night by teleconference. We plan to do that again on Easter Sunday morning. <laughs> That's far from ideal, but it's still meaningful. And uh, so today is Holy Saturday. And another take on this is uh, Holy Saturday is the day before Easter when Christ was resting in the grave after being crucified. It's sometimes called the second Sabbath after the biblical account of God resting on the seventh day after the creation of the universe. In the biblical account of Christ's burial, the women who intended to properly dress his body for burial were forced by Jewish tradition to wait. None of us like to wait. We want to get it done now. Christ was crucified the day before the Jewish Sabbath on what is called the Day of Preparation. When observant Jews cook food and do other tasks in advance because they aren't allowed to work on the Sabbath. And according to another Jewish tradition, days are buried or bodies are buried the same day as the person died. So when Jesus was hastily entombed before sundown on the day of preparation, the next day on the Sabbath, according to the Jewish law, everyone was under mandatory rest, which meant no work could be done. And uh, another interesting question that sometimes comes up, and you probably have asked yourself this before, you know, the, the timing just doesn't make sense. Okay, Jesus was died, buried, rose three days later. Hey, Friday to Sunday, that's not three days. Well, it could be explained like this. Calling part uh, there's a tradition of calling part of a day a day. Let's just say, for example, you try to get a friend on the phone. Uh, you start calling on Friday night, you don't reach him. Then you call all day Saturday, you still don't reach him. Finally, Sunday morning, you've got a hold of him. I'm so glad to get a hold of you. I've been trying for three days. You hadn't been trying for three 24-hour days, but you see see how it works. Another place it says, as Jonah was in the belly of a whale three days and three nights, uh, so was the Son of Man in the ground three days and three nights. Well, uh, I realize there's some problems with the math. But let's not miss the forest for the trees. Jesus rose, and that's what counts. And uh, there's no record what the women were doing during the Sabbath while they awaited their chance the next morning to go and do their sorrowful tasks to properly care for the body of Jesus. We can only imagine that they felt an enormous amount of grief, sorrow, and loss. They had to. 
And uh, although the women probably were very upset that they had to wait to care for the body of Jesus, the waiting period was actually orchestrated by God to fulfill the words of Jesus when he told the disciples, while they were still in Galilee, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him on the third day. He'll be raised to life. And his disciples were filled with grief, according to Matthew 17, 22 and 23. During Holy Saturday, the disciples and believers didn't connect Jesus laying dead in the tomb with any form of favorable outcome. They were in deep shock. They were in grief and despair. In the same way, we may be in a deep shock and grief over tragedies and challenges in our life. The coronavirus has brought a lot of grief to a lot of people. Individual losses. We may feel as we're totally and forever defeated. We may feel as if God has withdrawn and we will never feel joy or optimism again. You ever get to that point? Use your own Holy Saturday experiences to connect with the power of Christ using His uh, Holy Saturday prayer that I'm going to give you in a few minutes. During Holy Saturday, you may not find formalized church services to attend. This year, you probably won't. Next year, if you have an opportunity, go. You'll be blessed. Instead, Christians generally keep the vigil for Easter morning when they're at least able to celebrate the joyous news of Christ's resurrection. I've been to quite a few Easter sunrise services over the years. Some of them have been held in church. But the ones I've enjoyed most have been held outdoors. Now, when I was in Waco, we used to have quite a few of them out outdoors. and went to one outdoor service while I was in Ennis. And some places, it's they have a place usable for that. Some places they don't. I remember one time in sunrise service in Indian Springs Park in Waco, we uh, uh, the song "I'll Rise Again" was being sung, and about that time the sun began coming over the horizon, and the symbolism was so beautiful. So uh, it's uh, so meaningful this time of year. Let us pray. Dear Father, the Holy Saturday, on this Holy Saturday, I pray for personal times in my own life when I have suffered deep and unthinkable loss in my darkest times uh, when I am still in shock and mourning the death of any part of my life as I've always known it. Give me the glimmer of hope. Just as on Holy Saturday when Christ rested in the grave, Help me through the most still and stagnant days of my physical, emotional, and spiritual life. Give me endurance and expectancy as I cling to your word, to the promise you made in your scriptures. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow came down, do not return there. Till they have watered the earth, make it fertile and make it fruitful giving seed to one who sows and bread to one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but you shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent. Knowing that your dear son Jesus did not remain in the grave, but arose again on the third day, I pray for my own joyful restoration as I claim the promise from your holy word. You will go out in joy, be led forth in peace. Mountains and hills will burst into song before you. All the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of a thorn bush will grow the pine tree. Instead of the briars, the myrtles will grow. For this will be the Lord's renown for an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. May new life and restoration come to me and to all who hear my voice. After many days of difficult absences, may this whole world 
recover from the coronavirus. I pray expectantly for your resurrection power. In Jesus' name, Amen. Have a happy and blessed Holy Saturday.